Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Unemployment. This is a biggie. <clears throat> Everybody thinks we've got those green shoots out there and we're going to rebound. But we now have U.S. unemployment rates um, zeroing in on 10%. If, if, uh, if I lose my job, guess what? I'm not going to spend a lot of money next month. I'm not going to spend a lot of money next month um, on increased exports from China. And China is banking on the fact that we are going to start spending a lot of money. They've increased infrastructure capacity and ability to export. But if we're not there to buy it, guess what? That's sunk. That's wasted money in China. It presses down again on the deflation globally and also creates more problems domestically. China has not put their money into domestic growth. They have rising unrest. They're making a huge bet on, for some reason, they're making a huge bet on a big turnaround in U.S. unemployment. I don't see it. I'm not sure too many people see it. Um, so if, if China is wrong about this, I think the sustained risk environment uh, continues and we get another surge of risk in the U.S. Econ- in the global economy. Long-term overlay charts. These are weekly charts. You can do the same thing very easily. U.S. dollar index. Black line is S&P 500. Blue line is just the commodities index. There's the top in the top of the dollar right there, started the bear market. Here's what I said when we meant, but it funded these other asset classes, <clears throat> gold, oil, uh, other industrial metals, S&P 500, emerging market could have been on here, whatever you wanted to put on here, uh, except the U.S. dollar, which funded these, <clears throat> is what drove this. That is what's called a risk appetite environment, people moving out of the dollar into these other risky asset classes. <clears throat> U.S. stock market broke. Uh, because it's more sensitive, it discounts more, and the commodities market broke, um, right, coincided with the dollar bottom. And now we've moved into um, the risk, that's the risk-averse environment, risk appetite to risk aversion, and you see it in these major asset classes. <clears throat> Gold versus the U.S. dollar index. In general, um, when we've seen a rally uh, in gold, we've seen a decline in the U.S. dollar. They tend to be a mirror image of one another. Gold is priced in dollars. Gold has to maintain global purchasing power. If the, if the price of the dollar, which is what gold is priced in, falls, and gold must maintain its global purchasing power against a basket of goods internationally, gold would then have to go up. It's an economic relationship that makes sense. Paper versus stuff. This is why people use gold to hedge against fiat currencies and the world reserve currency. It just makes sense. But keep in mind, um, often we've seen, um, really since the dollar started floating, bull markets in the dollar have led to bear markets in gold. This correlation has not been as tight as it has in the past right in here. And I think because this structural change in the economy is very different, I think you have the Royal Reserve asset uh, benefiting in a sustained risk aversion, and you also have gold benefiting because of the fact I think you're seeing gold start to play that fear hedge role. Um, so if gold plays a fear hedge role, along with the U.S. dollar being the safe haven currency only because of its deep capital markets in the treasuries, um, they're going to tend to move together, and we're starting to see that. So that correlation is breaking down a bit. But long term, it's one that's important and has been pretty tight. Again, you can see this is just an example of stocks. Again, just wanted to show you uh, stock market broke uh, before the dollar started in the bottom. That's what currencies tend to overshoot, those rationales, those sentiment uh, rationales. Currencies tend to get in more so than other asset classes, and there's an example of it. The dollar's going lower, lower, lower. The stock market being a little more reflective and discounting some of the problems they had broke first, then the market finally bottomed. As all these rationales, when people got in here and said the U.S. dollar is going to zero, uh, the euro is going to go to two, they realized it was very fundamentally overvalued against the U.S. dollar. And given the global backdrop that was supportive of the world reserve currency, we finally started to see a change in this uh, a change in these rationales and a big rally, obviously a big fear rally uh, in the U.S. dollar. Now, of course, we're moving into this. 
what's called a new risk appetite environment. And starting right here, and you see it even on these charts, uh, on these weekly charts, and we'll get to that. So you can see how you can use these longer term uh, weekly charts to define these environments very, very clearly. You're not only looking just at these charts alone. Of course, you're reading the news. You know unemployment is rising. You know what consumer demand is doing, consumer spending is doing. You, you don't have to be a research analyst to see these things, uh, headline stuff. You're only looking at the headline major global macro stuff to really give you a feel to bounce against uh, these longer term charts um, to give you a, you know, a thumbnail understanding of, of, of what environment we're in. <clears throat> Now taking a look at the risk appetite currency. Commodities broke. Uh, as we saw, we know Aussie's a, a commodity currency. The Aussie peaked up here, and I think it was around 98 uh, in change against the U.S. dollar. Uh, came all the way down to near 60, a 36% decline in the Australian dollar in three months. There's that fear move. There's that fear move out of the risk uh, out of the risk appetite currency. You had a big fear move coming off the table. Guess what? You have the other side of this trade in the U.S. dollar. You're making dollar for dollar on the other side of this trade because the Aussie is crossed against the U.S. dollar. And as I said earlier, that's the beauty of the currencies. It doesn't matter what the stock market's going. You catch this fear move here short, you're going to catch this long on the other side. Um, and so, so that's why there's when you he sometimes you hear the expression there's always a bull market in currencies. It it implies that if there's a bear market in one currency, there will be a bull market in another. And this is a great example of it. Now we've been in a <clears throat> uh, pretty big bounce in the Australian dollar along with commodities, uh, driven by this near-term optimism. We've already seen a 50%, 15% move off the bottom in the Australian dollar. So as you start to see maybe this bottoming process in here, you start to see some of this optimism growing, and you start to maybe overlay some of your other charts, you could start to see this risk appetite ebb in play that doesn't nullify your longer-term Everything we've just done on the weekly charts, everything we've just done on the broader global macro, it doesn't nullify it, but it tells us, hey, this this theme right now is going to be put on holiday a little bit here, or it could, so we have to be open to it. Some optimism is coming back into the global economy, and whether or not we're you know, exceedingly confident on a long-term view, we have, to, we have to accept what the market has given us, and the market is telling us, even if we don't believe it, there's some green shoots of rebound, the market's telling us the China stimulus is working, even if we don't believe it. The market's telling us there's going to be a V-shaped recovery and the U.S. consumer is going to rebound. Again, we don't believe it. We're looking at this with some skepticism, but the reality is a 15% move in the Australian dollar um, on this type of optimism, you have to pay attention and be open to the idea that maybe something's happening underneath the surface that you're not picking up in your longer-term global macro because the price action over the near term is telling you that you ha we have to put that longer-term theme on holiday. Not invalidated, but we have to be very, very open. And that's sometimes a tough part about trading uh, any product, and it's especially tough sometimes in currencies because there's so, there's so many potential drivers, of directional drivers in currencies. You just have to key off some of these, I think, <clears throat> Uh, keying off some of these uh, major cl asset classes helps orient you to the price trend instead of being in, staying in love with a particular story. And, and that's another reason we use this intermarket stuff. One, to define the risk environment, and two, to keep us open that, hey, we may be wrong, because price action is always the main driver and the ultimate driver uh, of the trend, uh, regardless of what we may think and regardless of how much in love with our story we may be. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.